On Halloween in the Bronx, a group of trick-or-treaters was struck by a car. Three people were killed. In the next couple of weeks, along with a number of other vehicle-related deaths, three New Yorkers were struck and killed by buses. So many awful stories coming in a rush grabbed headlines, of course. And yet for the year as a whole, so far, statistics show progress in a number of categories, such as fewer pedestrian deaths overall, more moving violation tickets issued, and an increase in the number of intersections redesigned for better safety. Well, there's also been some talk of the city giving out more tickets for jaywalking, but the de Blasio administration says that is not a citywide policy. Here to represent the administration and to tell us more about the latest steps it's taking is Kim Wiley-Schwartz, the Assistant Commissioner of Education and Outreach for the Department of Transportation. Thanks for being here today, Kim. It's my pleasure. And we want to welcome back to the BK Live table New York City Council member from the 37th District, Rafael Espinal who's been calling in particular for more safety measures along Atlantic Avenue in East New York. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Thank you both for being here on BK Live. Kim, let's start with you. Can you give us a progress report? Where are we at with Vision Zero? Sure. Well, listen, we're looking at fatalities. We're looking at injuries. Those things are really important. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have seen sort of a steady decline in fatalities, but more importantly, in injuries. As we've gone through now, it's, a, it's almost a two-year process now, right? Um, look, this time of year, we always see this kind of stuff happening. I mean, the Halloween crash was particularly egregious. Uh, but we know that when we turn our clocks back, it gets darker. Uh, people start to uh, double down for the holidays. This can be sometimes our least uh, safe time of year. And so what we really are doing is focusing on dangerous driver behaviors and really trying to work with the driving community to ask people to slow down and to be more careful when they take turns, mm -hmm. which is what I think, if you really look at the crashes over the last two weeks, has been really part of the problem. But we are seeing a, you know, we're seeing a steady decline. Uh, for those of us who work and take these things very seriously, any death or injury is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, we're being so bold. So, council member, is this something, are you looking for a balance between being able to build our way out of it versus behavior our way out, watching those turns, being more careful, but there's still some dangerous infrastructure bits? I mean, I think we have to take an approach that addresses all the issues, and I think the administration has done a good job doing that. Uh, if you drive down streets like Bushwick Avenue, where dangerous turns were made in the past, there are actually mediums that were raised in certain areas where it didn't exist. Um, you have speed, you have speed, um, speed boards where are tracking down drivers' um, uh, miles per hour, so you're aware of how fast you're going. Right. And I'm seeing a lot of more officers on the streets with speed guns. So you know they're doing a great job overall in making sure that we're tackling the issue on all fronts. Mm -hmm. And I look forward to continuing working with them to see how we can continue making our streets safer. Uh, currently, we're talking about Atlantic Avenue, which has been a major issue in the Cypress Hills East New York community, where we've seen a lot of traffic fatalities over the decades, and it's finally being addressed. I look forward to continuing having the conversation with them. Now, if we go back to the beginning, Vision Zero, obviously the goal is zero pedestrian deaths. What can you tell us about how it was set up versus how it's evolved to today? I mean, I think the way that we went about it is what we're seeing grow, right? It, it, it requires that all agencies and the council work together uh, in order to really kind of drive down these, these, these fatalities. So initially it was NYPD, DOT, and the TLC, mm -hmm. and now we've been able to bring in more stakeholders uh, like the Department of Education, the Department of Health. Um, you know, we have DCAS who oversees our fleets, and so we're seeing changes in uh, driving by New York City employees. It takes a lot of constant vision. It's very bold, right? I mean, mm -hmm. trying to get down. And zero is an, is an idea that we have to apply every day, yeah. uh, including to things like Atlantic Avenue. We really need to go ahead and do these engineering treatments that we know work. Uh, and we need to work with communities to make sure that they can happen. So is this a particular challenge in New York during the course of us uh, doing this story? Uh, you know, we meet for edit meeting every day and we have this whole L.A. versus New York mm -hmm. thing where like L.A. is a car culture and New York, the streets belong to the people. And like we don't cross at the crosswalk. We just go where you go kind of thing. And like what's jaywalking? How do we get a ticket for that? What is it even? So how much of this sort of bad actor stuff is ingrained in just the way we are in New York? 
I mean, I would say that, you know, I think uh, the biggest issue that we have as, as people living in New York City is time, right? Mm -hmm. I think we're always in a rush to get somewhere. Whether you're walking or whether you're driving a vehicle or whether you're riding a bike, you're trying to get to where you want to be as, fast, as quickly as possible. Right. And I think those behaviors have to be addressed all around, you know, make sure that we continue having these educational outreaches for the drivers, for the pedestrians, for the bicyclists, and that, you know, at the end of the day, we have to be conscious of, of how we decide to uh, uh, treat our streets and uh, you know try to get from one place to another. You know, LA. I can say we you know, can say there are probably far less pedestrians. You know, it is car culture area. Here, you know, we have you know people from all around, all different sectors of of traveling to the city. Yeah. You know, so yeah. we're all pedestrians in New York mm -hmm. City, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, every single one of us. And so, you know, I, I mean, I think New Yorkers really respond well when they understand the facts. Mm -hmm. um, and so, since we know 70 percent of crashes are driver behavior, all or in part. Uh, you know, that's, and when you're really trying to drive something down, you go after the, the biggest actor first. But look, we're going we're gonna to have to look, as we get down to zero, to, you know, making it so that our streets really feel safe for people as they're walking. So is that jaywalking ticket thing really going to happen? Are we in danger of those? I mean, my understanding is that that's in the 109 precinct, and that's one of the ways that they've decided to, uh, to look at this. For us, you know, we do ask when we work with NYPD to look at, uh, you know, reckless driving as our top number one, uh, just because we know when you drive too fast, uh, you create a hazard in these rich pedestrian environments. Just walk outside of the studio, yeah. and there are far more walkers than there are drivers. Um, so, you know, it's it, we're, we're going to need to grow in, grow into it. And I think the 25 mile an hour speed limit is really helping. People are just that five mile an hour slow down. We're still getting to work on time. Uh, but, you know, just that tiny little bit can make all the difference in the world should mm -hmm. you have a crash that you weren't anticipating. Yeah. So what has education been like in schools in order to improve the behavior of the next generation? I mean, I, I think she can speak uh, most to it, but I can say from personal experience, and we were actually talking about this be, uh, behind the scenes, um, I actually remember being in the third grade and getting a class from DOT on how to cross the street. And to this day, I remember all the all the steps they've taught me. So I think they've been doing a great job for decades, and I'm sure yeah. you can speak more on that. And I love to hear that yeah. story. <laughs> um, yeah, we go to more than 600 schools every year. We start with the schools where kids are most likely to be injured, but our middle and high school students are vulnerable, our middle school students particularly. So I think we've been able to really be in there, principals want us there, uh, and again, it's it's teaching kids the top things that they need to understand, and then communicating with their families. If their parents do drive, I think that's another way of kids getting involved and really talking to families about how they can be part of the solution. So when you talk about those 70 percent of uh, accidents or even the fatalities that happen because of irresponsible driving, is there a, sort of a legislative arm that acts to penalize people even more. I remember years ago doing a story where there was like, if you want to get away with murder, the best way to yeah. do it is hit someone with a car in yeah. this city. So on the front of out increasing penalties for reckless driving. Well, the DAs are working really a lot on this. This is a big deal for them. But, you know, we do have 19190, which is our new right-of-way law, mm -hmm. uh, which the council has worked really hard on. Uh, you know, we're still trying to work some of the bugs out of that, but that says that if there's someone in the crosswalk and it was their right to walk and you strike and kill them, you, you, can, you can be more actively penalized. Um, but again, we, it's one of these systems we need to really continue to work on. Um, and we're seeing under Vision Zero, we have more teeth, mm -hmm. and it's looking like we're, we'll get there. we'll get there over time. I think as the years go by, there's different factors that play into something like Vision Zero. I can't even believe I have to ask about this, but <laughs> things like electric bikes mm -hmm. and hoverboards. Mm -hmm. How does the that number one <laughs> wish list Christmas <laughs> item? <laughs> How does that factor into our you know safety plan as a city? Well, I can say, um, you know, hoverboards and electric bikes are illegal. Uh, you aren't able to use the electric motorized vehicles on our streets. So if you're using it, you shouldn't be using it. Do, do I think that the hoverboard should be illegal? I don't think so. I think it's a silly law. On the sidewalk <laughs> or on the street or just anywhere? Because Any, you can't register. Streets, anywhere all over the place, Anywhere right? in general. is actually preempted by state law. State law uh, has a certain codification for where, where these vehicles fall under. Right. And un until until that's changed, we can't really uh, enforce that or, or take away the right for me to use that right. in the streets. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm also interested in more specifics about the Atlantic Avenue mm -hmm. uh, safety project. Uh, what's planned? Because I know we're talking about all these factors. I mean, just New York City in general, some of these roads are just so crazy. And myself, 
you know, all pedestrians, I think, have a tough time on Atlantic Avenue. Mm -hmm. So what do you have planned, or what are your Yeah, well, Atlantic, Atlantic Avenue in general uh, has been an avenue, especially in East New York, that has been ignored, uh, hasn't seen ma any major improvements by DOT uh, for decades. It doesn't compare to what downtown Brooklyn has now. You look at downtown Brooklyn, we have raised medians, uh, we have uh, crosswalks in, in dangerous areas. Right. but. The Atlantic Avenue in, in my district hasn't re received any of those updates or upgrades. So this is something that the community has been fighting for decades. Uh, over Ten years ago, I remember a sad story of a woman uh, jaywalking through the middle of Atlantic Avenue because there was no um, there was no crosswalk near her with her baby. She was struck by a vehicle. She passed away. The baby survived. And from that from from that accident, it's been a community uproar around you know what kind of investments are we going to make to actually make it safer. And it, we finally got into. Uh, that, that conversation. So we're looking to raise the medians, uh, find areas where we can create crosswalks so people would be less enticed to, to jaywalk, mm -hmm. uh, and also um, just put more turning signals for vehicles to make the left turns. We gotta say thank you for those countdown clocks. Those are awesome. You know, just how much time yeah. you have before. I, know. Getting I was across. in D.C. a couple of weeks ago. They count down from 90 seconds there. Really? I don't know. Maybe yeah. maybe that's a conversation for a different time. I, I, it's kind there of wonky, but they're the only <laughs> they're the only municipality that's allowed to show the walk signal and a countdown at the same time. Oh, interesting. For the rest of us, we can only start the countdown once we're flashing the hand. These are the things you worry about when you have my gig. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> it's, just, you know, all-consuming. It makes the mind bleed. So for those of us who don't have your gig, because you have to think about these things, we just got to try to get home alive. Mm -hmm. What are the overarching things that you would like people to take away from any of this conversation? Yeah. Well, obviously, I mean, this is a culture shift for New Yorkers. As you said, everybody's in a hurry, and we need to figure out and understand that we have each other's lives in, in our hands, right? New Yorkers have to take care of each other and protect each other. And it really comes down to, you know, first and foremost, if you know people who drive or if you drive yourself, you have to understand to expect pedestrians in the crosswalk every time, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. It's that sneak through or that last minute push, and we really need New Yorkers to do that. And then, of course, you know, I'm in charge of telling children uh, to be safe as pedestrians, and mm -hmm. they need to watch. They, they, kids need to understand what they need to do to protect themselves uh, in the traffic environment. But more importantly, that's because drivers are often making dangerous decisions. Yeah, you have to be, I mean, how do you control that? Because I'm thinking when I walk around now, literally every person driving, you have to assume is texting or on their yeah. computer, I don't know, Skyping, whatever <laughs> it is. Computer, making coffee, whatever. Mm -hmm. How but, do we target stupid drivers like that? I don't yeah. know, Brian, were you gonna have a question? Well, I was I'm, this is my gripe because I'm a bike rider and I just don't like the lemmings on the corner. Like, if you are, streets are for cars, sidewalks are for people. I don't ride my bike on the sidewalk. Don't make yourself stand in the street. Just get out of mm. the street. Mm. I'm competing with cars for space and then you're standing yes. there just like taking up all this space and, and I have to die or hit that you. That three footer, we don't understand why New York City pedestrians do that. And honestly, we see when trucks make their turns, they'll often, they can't help it, the back of their truck makes that. So one of the yeah. things we really ask people, just, just, just wait on the sidewalk, yeah. wait, wait your turn. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. uh, but honestly, a lot of times pedestrians do that because they can't see past that parked vehicle. Yeah. They're trying to do it to protect themselves. That's why we it. need, <laughs> but that's why we need to extend the curb, which is what mm. uh, the council member's talking about, when we can extend the curb so that people can see better. You see it all over downtown Brooklyn, yeah, those big extensions. Little, yeah. That does help, and then you know where you need to be, they know where they need to be, and we can all see each other. You know, and these are, these are slow changes, but they're happening, yeah. hopefully, quickly, yeah. like on Atlantic yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Can you comment on the overall success of those bike lanes? I mean, it does play into Vision Zero, sure I can. suppose, and it was very <laughs> controversial, you know, three or four years ago when they began. Yeah, well, what we know is when we put in a separated bike lane, we see a 40% reduction in all crashes. That means cars on cars, mm -hmm. Bike, bikes, nice. pets, everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's a safety measure for our seniors who are our most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they make up 35% of the fatalities wow. and only 12% of our population. They can cross that bike lane when they want to and then cross only three lanes of traffic when they get the light. And that really helps. But, um, you know, we know that bike lanes make everybody safer and we're continuing to put them in, especially as we grow city bike. I mean, someday city bike in East New York, mm -hmm. council member, mm -hmm. that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I don't know. I don't know what's up to say. <laughs> In the booth, they want me to say that Brian sometimes doesn't wear a helmet when he rides a bike. Brian, you know what? That's just a Thanks personal. That's a personal <laughs> safety issue. But I hope you have on lights because that's absolutely. A, that's a public health Front issue. We need to back. be able to see you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I obviously we've given away 150,000 free helmets to New Yorkers. Very cool. We believe very strongly in wearing a helmet, but that's you know that's your that's your decision. Buddy. I'm going to buy him one for the holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Going for free from deal too. Well, yeah, have a vision zero helmet coming out in April. Maybe. Maybe we could put one on your head. It's going to be All right. Cool. Let's meet back here in you April. You got it. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk more about Vision Zero. Kim talk. Wiley Schwartz, Raphael Espinal, thank you for being on BK Live and thank you for all the work that you're doing with Vision Zero and otherwise. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, be thank safe you. out there, people. Let's get to a new year.